YouTube, what's good with y'all? It's your man Gip, back with another video. Back with Black Dog, mm -hmm. another trucking vlog. Mm -hmm. Over here in uh, Compton, California, guys. Getting ready to pick up a load. Last minute load, broker reached out to me. We was going back and forth with the rate. I was trying to squeeze 2,500 out of him. Ended up with 2350, about $3.20 a mile where I'm going. We're going over to Salt Lake City. Keeping my fingers crossed, hoping I don't run into any crazy weather, any snow or anything like that, where this thing had to chain up. I ain't never put on chains. If I gotta buy chains and make it happen, believe I don't watched enough videos to know how to get out there with my gloves and my boots and make it happen, man. By any means necessary, we're gonna get this load delivered, guys. So we here, man, in the door, and uh was a uh, kind of a somewhat uh challenging back. As you can see, it's never really like no issue going into side of a garage or whatever, but the main thing is either you're gonna cut it close there or cut it close on this side and just make sure you don't scrape nothing up. You can see all the nicks on the walls where previous people to probably been dragging their trailers and knocking chunks out of these people's property, man. But I'm here, about to get loaded. Load don't deliver until Monday, it's Friday. It ain't but what, from Los Angeles to Salt Lake, I got about a 660 miles. Black dog, <laughs> big boy back there gonna eat that up, man. So, trying to debate if I'm just gonna go ahead and strike out tonight or just wake up and split that little 660 up over the weekend. Knock down 3.30 Saturday, knock down 3.30 on a Sunday. Or just go ahead and push all the way up into Salt Lake City, man, and post up at the closest truck stop to the receiver as possible. I have been looking at uh, a lot of little Instagram stories of other going up Interstate 5, and right when they get to Interstate 70 that takes you into Colorado, man, that snow was coming down like crazy. So I know in Colorado they got mandatory chain laws, I'm sure. Utah has them as well. I don't know if it's mandatory like Colorado where they want you to have chains aboard your vehicle, whether it's snowing or not, they just want it, it's required throughout certain times of the year. If I gotta stop at the uh, one of the travel centers while I'm making my way up, man, we will be buying chains for Black Dog. These are 22.5s, 11Rs, so uh, I always see them where they selling the chains right there in front of the uh, the travel center. So I don't know how much they cost, man, but uh, hopefully I don't need them. But if I need them, I'm gonna get them and at least I'm gonna have them stored up. Keep up in my little side toolboxes here until they are needed. All right, guys, so you see they uh, load me up. We got six rows, man. Not no coils, not no metal. Them is some plastic rows. They must be pretty heavy. They put three up in the front on the nose and three towards the rear. And um, yeah, I'll just take it slow. Make sure that stuff don't get sliding. Man. I said they're pretty heavy, but we should be good on the weight. Can't judge a book by its cover. Just six little rolls and uh, let's get it done, man. The next day. All right, guys, so I finally decided to go on and jump on the highway. Coming through downtown LA right now. Saturday, look at all this freaking traffic on a Saturday, man. You'd think it's Monday morning out here. The Monday morning blues is everyday blues. Driving through this city, guys. Picked up the load yesterday. Got 18 of these heavy plastic rolls on here. You would think it's coils behind me the way it feel. Super heavy. Definitely want to stop at uh, a cat scale and see what my weight is like just out of curiosity. 
the shipper said I shouldn't be overweight, but you know, since when can we start believing what a shipper say? Or a broker, you know? Beautiful day, beautiful Saturday. I should be up through all this mess pretty soon on the Interstate 15 going north, trying to knock down about 350 miles. That's if I don't stop in Vegas. If I stop in Vegas, that'll put me at about 250. Depends on how I'm feeling. May go up in the cigar lounge, lounge with the fellas for a couple hours. Uh, kick back right there, see how I feel. Might jump back on the highway, do it moving for another 100 miles. Really not no rush. I'm not due to be at the shipper's door until Monday at 1.30 p.m. So, ain't no sense of pushing too hard if I don't have to, you feel me? Especially driving through the night. So that's probably what I'll do. Stop in Vegas and get up early and get to striking out across the uh, desert, man. Cross into Arizona and cross into Utah. And make our way towards Salt Lake City, guys. So you know I had to stop and see my guys at En Fuego. I normally, when I come here, Normally get the Toro Suite. Tonight, I'm gonna sit and smoke with them on the El Grande Suite. But you can see in the uh, walk-in humidifier, they got pretty much everything in here, man. A couple of you guys dropped in the comments the sticks you like to pull on. I wish I had time to go through that and find it what you was suggesting because I'm sure they have it here but uh man look at this fat nub it's chunky right there boy yeah but I'm gonna just stick to uh what I normally get and kick back in Vegas for the night get up and uh finish my trip man all right guys top of the morning oh woke up here in hot las vegas but this morning it is very pleasant outside man just taking my little morning walk walking over here to this uh 7-eleven store try to grab me some cream guys remember last time i took this walk I was scurrying over here to get a bag of ice and some water. I was in that damn bumblebee, man. I was going through it out here. It was the middle of summer and it was a scorcher. But when I be saying I'm at OJ's joint, I be talking about this hotel right here, man, the Palace Station. It's that hotel the boy was at when he stormed up in here like a gangster. Him and the mother two cats to get his memorabilia. That's what I be talking about, man. Just go ahead and buy me a little cream. I ain't got to take nothing from him. What's the date on this thing? Let's go with this for now, man. Make it work. All right, man, I'm here. Seems like that's all you do the most is feed fuel to these fuel-sucking beasts, man. Especially these things. These long hoods, they're gonna absorb and suck up way more than anything with some plastic aerodynamic curves to it, man. It is what it is. I ain't complaining. We're gonna get this fuel in here, take advantage of this mud flap app. They're giving it to me for $3.33 a gallon. Hoping I don't go over 175 gallons. As you can see, we just had what? 64 and count so see what it do man let's get it in here and get up to salt lake city five six hour drive ahead of me this TA real quick and jump on this cat scale this log seems extremely heavy 
And when I got loaded, like I was showing you guys before we left, they said everything on the drives and everything on the tandems on the trailer is 18 big rolls of plastic. Nine of them is sitting up the front, the nose of the trailer right over the drives, and the other nine is at the rear, basically on top of the uh, the tandems, man. So. Before I get into Utah and go through that big port of entry, I'm about to run this thing across this uh this uh Cascale, man, and make sure that everything is looking good as far as my weights, man. Every time you come to this TA2, you make a left down there to get here. Freaking uh Arizona State Trooper is always sitting there, man. So let's get this first way in, y'all. Yes, ma'am. Pardon? That's it. That's it? Yes. Okay, Okay, now trailer number. Five, three, zero, zero, five. All right, guys, so just like I expected, we're sitting at 33,000 on the drives, 34,400 on the trailer. <laughs> And the tires is not the best. Nope. So now I'm going to go over here, adjust my weight, go back across the scale, slide the tandems back, maybe like, I'll just say maybe two holes. That should uh, push some of that weight forward onto the drives. We still got a thousand less of the gross that's allowed, the 34,000. So. Glad I followed my first mind. I knew this stuff was super heavy, man. I could feel it. Gross vehicle weight, 79,240 pounds. So we definitely not over the 80K, but uh, we do need to slide those wheels back a tad bit, guys. Run back across that scale, do the reway. $14 for the first way, $454 the reway. I'm not sure exactly how much weight is adjusted each hole, but we want to come out this front and I'm at least try to go back. I'm gonna try two for now. Uh, let's get those pulled in and uh slide these things back a tad bit, man. Know why them guys didn't put some of them rolls in the center? You know, I don't know. Halfway through the trip now, so I gotta do what it is I know to do to stay compliant and not get no overweight ticket on the uh, drives, man. So slide it forward slowly, guys. 12 seconds late. Back to the scale we go, man. I never had to do a reway. Instead of just sitting up there trying to do it in my head and just think I'm gonna be good, I'm gonna go ahead and pay the four dollars. That way I'll have it documented. So what I did, guys, as you can see, the trailer axle 34.4, the reway came in at 33.2. And then it put 60 extra pounds on top of the, uh, the drives and also made the steers go up probably about a hundred pounds so instead of paying another five dollars to go back through the scale i just counted the amount of holes that i went back on the first way which was six holes i knew that was kind of steep i divided the six between the difference in the weight which came out to be like each hole i slid back was like 200 pounds each hole so i slid it back up three holes which took 600 of the 33.2. So if you take 600 away from that, that should be 33, 32.8, 32.6, and then 600 more to the drives, 33.6. So I should be good. That should cover it, man. A little simple mathematics. 
will help out. Now I know for sure, I've heard all these different terms on what the weight differences is, 400 pounds, 500 pounds, I just did the math. I went back six holes, did the difference in the amount of weight, came out to 1,200 pounds, divide 1,200 by six, And that gives you 200 pounds Bruh. each hole. So, still pushing it, still super heavy. As long as the gross vehicle weight ain't over 80, man, that's all that really matters. And uh, get some of that weight off of the steers and adjust it. You know, adjust the weight, man. Don't run the risk of no overweight ticket. Don't know how much they are, but don't need that on the license or the payment so let's get back on the highway man and get up to salt lake city it's a little time consuming doing that but i had to get it right yes sir i always ship how beautiful it is driving through this area right here like the tip of arizona going into utah virgin river gorge Beautiful countryside. It's rock formations. It's beautiful, man. Very scenic ride right here, guys. guys I had to come up off of that highway man coming up here on that interstate 15 north I started seeing way too much dead livestock on the highways my appointment tomorrow for delivery is not until 1 p.m. I'm gonna go jump in the shower man uh, and I did not want to run the risk of running into no freaking deer, man. I mean, I was seeing quite a bit of them too, guys. No cap, man. Once I see like eight, nine, ten deer Bruh. within a few miles of me driving, I'm coming off the highway. I one of them big bull real. Fender guards and bumper guards, whatever the correct term is for it. Yeah, I'll catch my drift, man. I'm finna go in here and shower up, shut it down, get ready for tomorrow, finish up these little 120 miles I got left, and uh, get ready for a backhaul, man. about 70 80 miles away from the receiver this wind is out here blowing around like crazy man i guess it swoops down off all these little hillsides and mountains and uh it was coming through that truck parking lot like crazy last night little small ice pellets letting this would stick to the ground or whatever but uh got pretty cold i pulled out that damn sleeping bag you can see it back there this back getting tucked away man but yeah i'm glad 
Now this is where you can appreciate being heavy when you got these crosswinds. So it is what it is, man. Ain't no way through it but to do it. Just about to Salt Lake City. Get this heavy stuff up off of us. Alright guys, so I made it here. They just gave me a door, door four. Pretty tight in here. Got a right in appointments at one. Got here at 11. Should be turning two. That pretty red soon. Get this heavy stuff off of me, man. I think I better go ahead and go ahead and slide my tandems back. Ain't go nowhere now. It just locked me in. I can't slide nothing. Well, I'm going to go ahead and uh, bring this video to an end, and I will tap back in with y'all on the next video, man. Be sure to subscribe, like, comment, all that good stuff. Show your boys some thumbs up love, man. I'll see y'all on the next one, man. This joker was heavy, y'all. Super duper heavy. I'm so glad to get this off of the wagon, man. Truck life, y'all. See y'all on the next one.